Um, thanks to you at home for joining us this hour. Happy Monday. Happy to have you with us. The most important and the most powerful military alliance in the world is NATO. Uh, within NATO, the largest military of all the NATO countries, of course, is the one that belongs to our country. Um, but what's the second largest military force in NATO? It belongs to a country that is almost an original member of the military alliance. Uh, the U.S. was there from the very beginning in 1949. The country that has the second largest military in NATO was a full member by 1952. Um, but they are a hugely important part of the NATO alliance for a whole bunch of different reasons, including the fact that their military is just so darn big. Uh, and you should know that the, the country with the second largest military in NATO after us is the nation of Turkey. And whether or not you are particularly interested in the politics of that region and the, the balance of power in that region of the world, um, because Turkey is so strategically important and because they are part of NATO, the U.S. is literally obligated by treaty to consider the stakes and, if necessary, to consider getting involved if things go particularly pear-shaped in Turkey which they did on July 15th, 2016, when we started getting images like these uh, out, of, out of Turkey. Uh, it basically brought the rest of the American news cycle to a halt when we saw tanks in the streets. Uh, and it, it, was, it, was, it was quite a feat at the time to bring the American news cycle to a halt at that specific time, because again, this was July 15th, 2016. Think about what was going on right there in our own politics and in our own news cycle. That was not just the, the heart of our presidential election season. July 15th, 2016, that was right before the nominating conventions were about to start. And in fact, that exact day, July 15th, was the day that Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump announced on Twitter, naturally, who his running mate was going to be. And usually it is a huge deal when a presidential candidate makes his or her running mate announcement. Um, but in 2016, Mike Pence absolutely got off easy. He basically completely elided the whole first day scrutiny thing. Um, July 15th, first of all, was a Friday. So as an announcement, the running, running mate announcement of Mike Pence was probably doomed by the whole Friday night news dump phenomenon to dissolve a little bit anyway over the course of that midsummer weekend. But then that story, the announcement of Pence, it just got absolutely knocked out of all primetime news coverage that day because of the fiery, super dramatic, out in the streets, you know, shots fired military coup in the country that is the second largest military power in NATO after us. And part of the drama with the American news coverage of that coup that night, about what was going on overnight that night in Turkey, part of the drama was that it really wasn't clear as we were covering it whether or not the coup was going to succeed in overthrowing the Turkish government. And of course, it did not in the end. But we didn't know that night how it was going to work out. And I remember covering that night, there was this moment when the Turkish president flew back into the country. He'd been abroad and he flew back into the country that night and he made a live speech from the airport uh, proclaiming that the coup that had, tr that had unfolded that night in his country, the coup that had attempted to overthrow him that night, he called it in his speech that night from the airport, quote, a gift from God. And it like sent a chill down everybody's spine, right? Because he explained this gift from God, this failed coup would allow him to purge the country of his enemies. And that was a sign that things were going to get very dark very fast, and they did, and they have stayed dark ever since. Uh, the Turkish president intimating in that sort of blood-curdling speech that he gave that night from the airport, intimating that night that he blamed this military coup on a guy who lives in the United States, a legal U.S. resident. He's got a green card here. He's lived here for a couple of decades. He's a Turkish cleric. His name is Gulen. He lives in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. He is the boogeyman for everything that goes wrong in Turkish politics. So when President Erdogan got up there that night in the middle of the coup and said from the airport, this is a gift from God, I will purge this nation of my enemies. And you know what? Turkey cannot be ruled from Pennsylvania. That's what he was talking about. He was talking about this guy, green card holder, U.S. resident who lives in Pennsylvania on whom he blames everything wrong in his country. But again, this was in the thick of it in terms of our own presidential race. July 15, 2016. 
And that night in Cleveland, Ohio, the top national security advisor to the Donald Trump campaign, um, he himself was giving a speech to a conservative group in Cleveland. And he diverged from his prepared remarks to tell the people at that event about this coup that was at that moment breaking out in Turkey. They basically said, you know, the people at this event, you might otherwise not have heard about it because you're here, but what's going on in the news right now is there's a coup in Turkey. And Mike Flynn basically explained to that conservative audience that night in Cleveland, as the coup was going on, that the coup was basically awesome. <laughs> that it was something that that audience there should literally applaud because Basically, it would be great if the Turkish government was overthrown in that coup that night. Now, I will tell you that I spent most of my career uh, in the region of the world that we're, that we're still engaged in. Still engaged in. And so many of you may be only caught in the news, or some of you, probably most of you, you don't know. But there's an ongoing coup going on in Turkey right now. Right now, there's a coup. I'm going to be very fascinated to see what happens because if, they, if the military succeeds, and one of the things that came out of the military tonight, they're, they're about plus eight hours from here. So it's probably around, I don't know, three or four o'clock in the morning there. One of the things that the military immediately said is we recognize our responsibilities with NATO, we recognize our responsibilities with the United Nations. We want to make sure that the world knows we are, we want to be seen as a secular nation. This is the military. So, yeah, that, that is worth clapping for. That is worth clapping for. There's a coup going on right now. It would be amazing, right? It's worth clapping. All right, you want to see how corruption works? If you are ever considering selling out your country, literally selling out your country for money. Uh, here's the world's simplest demonstration of how to do that very quickly at the very highest level. So poor Mike Pence is announced as Donald Trump's running mate on July 15th, right? Mike Flynn that night gives a speech. It'll be awesome if the Turkish government gets overthrown. That's July 15th, the night of the coup. Now, Thanks to a new federal felony indictment that was just unsealed today, now we know that prosecutors say it took at most 11 days for Mike Flynn, Donald Trump's national security advisor, to do an absolute U-turn on that important national security issue in exchange for a big pile of money. Today, the vice chairman of the Flynn Intelligence Group appeared in federal court in Virginia to face federal conspiracy charges and a charge of acting unlawfully in the United States as the agent of a foreign government. Mike Flynn himself is described in this indictment as person A. After Mike Flynn got up in front of that crowd on July 15th and said they all ought to applaud this military coup to overthrow the Turkish government, according to today's indictment, prosecutors say 11 days later, on July 26th, Flynn engaged in a, quote, detailed discussion with the vice chairman of his company about going to work on behalf of the government of Turkey, specifically to go after that guy in Pennsylvania who the Turkish government was blaming for the coup. Wait, I thought the coup was a good thing. Oh, 11 days later, nope. Quote, on or about July 27th, 2016, Flynn's business partner replied to an email from his Turkish government contact saying he'd had a detailed discussion with Michael Flynn the previous night. Flynn's business partner informed his Turkish contact, quote, we are ready to engage on what needs to be done. Flynn and his business partner then proposed a detailed plan to their Turkish government contact. By the second week in August, August 10th, their contact with ties to the Turkish government reported back that they had the green light to go ahead with their plan. Quote, on or about August 10th, 2016, Turkish government, the Turkish government contact sent an email to Flynn and his business partner saying, quote, I just finished in Ankara after several meetings today with Turkish minister number two and Turkish minister number one. I have a green light to discuss confidentiality, budget, and scope of the contract. And then sure enough, about three weeks after that, Mike Flynn gets the contract. Quote, under the terms of the contract, Company A, which is the Flynn Intelligence Group, was to receive a total of $600,000 broken into three $200,000 payments. was expected to produce in exchange for this money. Quote, the contract noted Company A was expected to deliver findings and results, including but not limited to making criminal referrals. 
against the Turkish guy in Pennsylvania who the Turkish government was blaming for the coup. And then within a couple of weeks, Flynn was at a fancy hotel in New York City meeting with his business partner, who was charged today, and their Turkish government contact, who was charged today, and those two ministers from the Turkish government, one of whom we believe was President Erdogan's son-in-law, his, his Jared, if you will. The purpose of that meeting in mid-September was to discuss how, how Mike Flynn, for money, was going to help the Turkish government get their hands on this permanent U.S. resident, this Turkish guy who lives in this country, who has a green card here, who the U.S. Justice Department says cannot legally be extradited to Turkey no matter how much Turkey wants to get their hands on him. Mike Flynn, nevertheless, was going to deliver him for money. Did I mention this was all for money? By election day itself, on November 8th, Mike Flynn published a somewhat terrifying op-ed in the Hill newspaper where he called this Turkish guy living in Pennsylvania a shady Islamic mullah and compared him to freaking Osama bin Laden. So all that unfolds over the space of less than four months, right? When Mike Flynn was not being paid by this foreign government, he told an American audience the night of the coup that they should applaud the coup, that the overthrow of the government in Turkey would be great for the United States. They should applaud that. That would be amazing. Let's root for these people who are trying to overthrow that government. Let us root for the coup. Sensing an, an opportunity to make a buck, though, he turns on, a I was going to say turns on a dime. He turns on many dimes. <laughs> he turns on $600,000 worth of dimes and says, less than two weeks later, you know what? Forget what I actually think is right for the United States when I'm not being paid to say otherwise. For the low, low price of $600,000, I will not only stop telling Americans that they should applaud that coup, I will help the government that was the target of that coup hunt down the guy they're blaming it on. I will fight and undermine the United States government's determination that that guy is safe in our country and is a legal resident here, and I will figure out a way for money to hand him over to Turkey so they can do what they want with him. All you got to do is pay me. And by the way, I'm going to be the next national security advisor of the United States. Thanks to today's indictment, uh, we know that the op-ed that Mike Flynn published on Election Day attracted the attention of the counterintelligence folks at the Justice Department, uh, who apparently looked at that op-ed and thought, hmm, <laughs> shady Islamic mullah. Mm -hmm. They thought that was, seemed like it might be written by somebody who was a foreign agent of the Turkish government. Should we check to see if the incoming national security advisor is in fact a secret foreign agent? They checked. Quote, following Flynn's op-ed, the FARA Registration Unit of the U.S. Department of Justice sent a letter to Flynn requesting additional information to determine whether he, the Flynn Intelligence Group, and or other individuals had an obligation to register as an agent of a foreign government under the Foreign Agents Registration Act. And of course, in, in quick succession thereafter, Mike Flynn was named National Security Advisor. He was sworn in as National Security Advisor. He then very quickly had to resign as National Security Advisor. After he had resigned, he retroactively registered as a foreign agent representing the government of Turkey. He was then charged with lying to FBI investigators about his contacts with the Russian government as part of the charging documents in that case. He admitted that he also lied to investigators about him being a paid agent for the government of Turkey and the fact that he was acting illegally in this country as their unregistered foreign agent during the time that he was the top national security advisor on the Trump campaign and, in fact, right up through Election Day. Today, with the unsealing of this indictment, we learn that Flynn's Turkish government contact, who set up this gig for him, who was allegedly running this whole operation on behalf of the Turkish government and arranging to funnel the payments to Mike Flynn through a non-Turkish company so as to hide the origin of the payments, that guy, Turkish guy, was charged today by federal prosecutors and is facing decades in prison. Although he has not still, he has still not appeared in court. He's described in court filings today as a resident of Istanbul. One of the filings that was unsealed today was a warrant for his arrest. But in the New York Times reporting on this case today, he is described as whereabouts unknown. The other person was charged today, though, is the vice chairman of the Flynn Intelligence Group, a guy named Bijan Kian. Mike Flynn's longtime business partner. Mr. Kian did appear in court today after responding to a summons ordering him to be there. And you might have seen a lot of headlines today describing him as a, as a Flynn associate or a Flynn business associate who has now been charged as a secret foreign agent. But 
honestly, the way he should be described today in terms of the, the, the import of this new indictment and how this fits into everything, the way he should be described today is as a Trump transition official who was charged today as a secret foreign agent. I mean, look, his, his LinkedIn page is still there. This is the LinkedIn page for Bijan Kian, who today became the latest person associated with President Trump to be charged with federal felonies. He says that he was on the ODNI landing team for Trump's presidential transition. See, his title listed there, Presidential Transition Team's Intelligence Community, Deputy Lead, ODNI Landing Team. In a prescient Associated Press piece from last summer, which raised concerns about this very early on, reporters Stephen Braun and Chad Day noted that Mr. Keon, again, this is the guy who was charged today, noted that he was involved in the transition in, quote, sensitive hiring and policy discussions involving U.S. intelligence. According to one Trump transition official speaking to the AP last summer, one of the things Bijan Keon did in the transition, when he was on the landing team at the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, one of the things he did was he helped, quote, scrutinize then Congressman Mike Pompeo before Pompeo was named Trump's CIA director. So one of the senior people on the Trump transition landing team for intelligence matters was secretly on the payroll of a foreign government while he was helping select the next CIA director. Oh. And now he's charged as part of an alleged scheme to disguise the origins of more than a half million dollars in payments to Mike Flynn and Flynn's company so he and Flynn could secretly work in the interest of a foreign country without anybody knowing it while they were also working at high level jobs in intelligence inside the U.S. government. And somehow... Mike Flynn, who is person A in this indictment, and who the indictment spells out was pretty clearly the other big part of the scheme. Somehow, Mike Flynn emerges from this as an unindicted co-conspirator who is not being charged and who is not facing any jail time for this scheme whatsoever. And presumably, that is because Mike Flynn's cooperation is what led to this indictment today. But given what seems to have been his, his role in this, given the clear implication that he was a national security advisor to a presidential candidate who was secretly also a foreign agent for months and then lied about it when confronted about it by the FBI. I mean, that's, that seems like a remarkable thing for him to skate on, right? Why do you get to be unindicted in this matter when this matter seems to sort of be all about you? We will get some expert advice in just a moment as to why Flynn himself may not have been charged in this scheme that he was at the center of. But there are a number of dangling threads here. I mean, beyond why wasn't Flynn charged for this? I mean, as another matter, there have been recent reports that the Trump administration, even now, is newly considering handing over this Turkish guy in the Poconos to the Turkish government because the Turkish government keeps demanding it, even without Mike Flynn secretly on their payroll to try to get that. And without the deputy head of the landing team at the intelligence community secretly on their payroll to try to get that. There's reports that the Trump administration is still thinking right now about handing that guy over. There's also the unresolved allegation that was made by former CIA director James Woolsey, who says when he was briefly part of the discussions that took place between Flynn and Flynn's company and the Turkish government on this matter, he recalls a meeting at which they discussed a covert plot to actually go kidnap this guy in Pennsylvania, in the Poconos, and 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 take him, you know, put a bag over his head, presumably, and fly him to a remote prison island and thereby spirit him away to Turkish custody. Woolsey went public with an allegation that when he was privy to these conversations, they involved a kidnapping plot. Whatever happened to that? And then there's the timing here. Uh, this remarkable new indictment was filed with the court last week, but it was only unsealed today. And today is the eve of Mike Flynn's sentencing by a federal judge in Washington, D.C. Is the unsealing of this indictment, which spells out Flynn's whole foreign agent scheme involving Turkey, is this designed to help Mike Flynn at sentencing tomorrow? Because this is yet another instance where the defense can say, hey, look, our client has been super cooperative. You know, just yesterday, there was another important indictment where Mike Flynn's cooperation led to more people being charged with felonies. Is this something that could help him in his sentencing? because it shows yet another investigation on which he has been an important cooperator? Or 
would this potentially hurt him for his sentencing tomorrow? Since, of course, it is a vivid reminder that Mike Flynn wasn't just an otherwise totally awesome dude who never did anything wrong until that one day he hiccuped in the middle of his FBI interview and, oops, they mistook it for a lie, which is what his defense has been claiming to the judge. I mean, the scheme laid out in today's indictment shows that Flynn really thought he could be national security advisor, the national security advisor in the White House, and a secret foreign agent at the same time. <laughs> and he was willing to try it if you give him enough money, including lying about it to federal investigators before finally he stopped lying about it to federal investigators and he flipped on the other people involved in the scheme. So we, we will find out tomorrow at Mike Flynn's sentencing whether or not this new indictment, newly unsealed today, cuts for him or cuts against him. Or potentially whether the judge decides to compartmentalize this and see it as a totally separate and unrelated matter. We should get clues to that both by the length of the sentence that Flynn gets tomorrow, but also hopefully by any remarks that the judge may make in court explaining uh, the sentencing decision. Um, but honestly, aside from the fate of Flynn, I mean, the thing, the thing we all hope gets explained here, and again, we will get some expert advice on this from a national security reporter who's been on this story from the very beginning. Uh, but, but for all of us, I mean, this is, this is our government, right? National security matters affect all of us. And you can't get anywhere near the lurid story of Mike Flynn and his lies to investigators and his schemes and his foreign entanglements that he was covering up while he was involved in these sensitive matters, right? You, you know, all the ways he was caught, all the warnings and the red flags flying around. You can't get anywhere near this lurid saga of Mike Flynn as a national security and counterintelligence disaster at the highest levels of this administration without at least wondering why the Trump administration did not care about any of this, right? I mean, we, we now know d during the transition, which was headed up by star-crossed Vice President-elect Mike Pence during the transition which Mike Pence was running. Mike Flynn's lawyers notified the transition formally in writing that Flynn was the object of an FBI investigation into him having potentially acted as a secret agent for the government of Turkey. The transition was notified about that during the transition. Despite that notification that he was under federal investigation on a counterintelligence matter, they went ahead and named him national security advisor anyway. Nobody blinked. It was only days later, literally less than a month later, when the Justice Department, the acting attorney general, came up to the White House with a hair on fire, absolutely unprecedented warning that, you know, okay, if you don't care about him potentially being a foreign agent of Turkey, we also need to tell you he's been having secret communications with the Russians too, and he's been lying about those communications, which means the Russian government has compromised him. And you cannot have a national security advisor who is compromised by the Russian government even if you are comfortable with one who's secretly on the payroll of a different foreign government, which apparently you're fine with. But even with that warning, nope, nobody cared. No reaction. They kept him on as national security advisor. They didn't restrict his access to sensitive and classified information whatsoever. I mean, set aside Set aside the president on this. Set aside the existentially challenging issue of the president himself potentially being compromised, right? I mean, Flynn as national security advisor, given what we now know was going on with Flynn and what we now know the law enforcement community and the intelligence agencies knew was going on with Flynn and what they warned the incoming Trump folks about Flynn, Flynn as national security advisor is something that just seems impossible in retrospect. I mean, that's like learning that, like, I was in the running to be first lady. Like, really? No. Like, not conceivable. No matter, like, what drugs you take. Can't think that hard. I mean, given the warnings and the information that everybody in the campaign and administration were aware of at the time, I mean, whatever you think of Trump, Mike Pence was running the transition. Reince Priebus was set to be White House chief of staff. Don McGahn was set to be White House counsel. None of these guys minded at all when they were told or reminded that their national security advisor designate, or in fact their sworn in national security advisor, was under FBI investigation for secretly being on a foreign country's payroll. And he had been for months. He had potentially been on a foreign country's payroll for months while running the national security, advisor, national security apparatus of a presidential campaign. Right? And that of course meant sitting in on all the classified briefings that Trump and his campaign, the upper levels of his campaign, were able to get once he became the nominee. 
I mean, we now know at that time, right, Flynn was being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars secretly by the Turkish government to advocate for their interests in the United States. At that same time, the Turkish government was repeatedly pressing the U.S. government to hand over that Turkish guy in the Poconos who they wanted to blame for the coup. Flynn was in on classified briefings as a senior Trump campaign official at the time that the Turkish government was pressing the U.S. government to act on that issue. He was secretly being paid by the Turks to lobby on that issue. Any, anything on that ever come up at any of the classified briefings for the Trump campaign? Or the, or the transition or the new administration? Anything that he was in on? It, one of the guys charged today admits to having been a secret agent of a foreign government when he was on the Trump transition, setting up the leadership of the intelligence community for the Trump administration. Uh, the guy he was doing that with went on to be national security advisor, and apparently he himself is not going to be charged. What about all the Trump transition officials and the Trump administration folks who knew that Flynn was under investigation for potentially being a foreign agent? who had to know that Flynn's business partner was also under investigation as a potential foreign agent while he had served in a senior role in the transition on intelligence matters. What about the other people in the transition and the Trump administration who knew all that and just let those guys in, let them stay in there anyway? I mean, Pence, McGahn, Priebus, all these guys who got these warnings, it's fine that they just blew them off? I mean, maybe this is just the way these things work, but what we saw today is the guy who was literally the lowest link in the chain getting charged, plus a foreigner, a guy in Turkey who nobody's ever going to be able to find. But all these other people, all these other ranking people who had very senior and important national security roles and decision-making roles in the federal government of the United States, they were either in on it themselves or they turned a blind eye to it and let these people have access to highly classified information and high-level decision-making on intelligence matters. They just decided they didn't care, let it happen. None of them get charged, none of them are implicated. This is how this ends? Only the lowest guy on the poll gets charged? Maybe, but maybe not. Uh, hold that thought, we've got expert advice coming up. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.